10 minutes. That's all it could take to potentially identify the identity of the mysterious and infamous skyjacker named D.B. Cooper after 52 years. And now they just might have the answers. D.B. Cooper vanished into thin air after hijacking a plane with a bomb and a fortune strapped to his waist and has eluded authorities ever since. But now, after years of relentless pursuit, a breakthrough has emerged and the case may finally be solved after half a century. An independent investigator managed to snag Cooper's DNA from an item left behind before he jumped from the plane using new technology and bringing him one step closer to cracking this legendary case wide open. Eric Ulis, who has been investigating the case independently for the past 13 years, spilled some secrets, hinting that the curtain may finally be closing on Cooper's anonymity. And not only that, but he has his eye on a specific suspect who's flown under the radar for decades. I'm Linda with It's a Crime, so now let's get into it. Private investigator Eric Ulis recently sat down with scientist Tom Kay, who acquired D.B. Cooper's tie 15 years ago in 2009. Cooper left the black J.C. Penney clip-on tie behind his seat before parachuting out of the plane he hijacked on the eve of Thanksgiving in 1971. He jumped at 10,000 feet with $200,000 strapped to him, never to be seen again. Tom K used a special device capable of capturing particles in a filter to analyze the tie for traces of certain metals, chemicals, and pollen. This tie has long been considered one of the most significant clues in the case, holding the potential to unravel the mystery surrounding Cooper's identity. And only recently did they realize that the special device can also capture DNA. And according to both Eric and Tom, they said that they have Cooper's DNA with 100% certainty, and they plan to collaborate with a state-of-the-art lab to conduct metagenomic DNA analysis, a technique that is able to separate individual DNA strands. And following this analysis, Eric and Tom intend to construct a genetic profile of Cooper for comparison with the suspects, particularly one they have an eye on, a man named Vince Peterson, who they've had as their prime suspect since late 2022. They said, it's critically important because, let's say you have a dozen different DNA profiles on that tie from everyone who has come in contact with it over the years, including various FBI agents and Cooper himself. We will be able to separate all those strands individually, and while we won't know which one is Cooper's, we will be able to gradually narrow them down. If D.B. Cooper had any kids, for example, those children would likely be on the tie as well. So if any of the dozen or so profiles on the tie are related, that will most likely be Cooper's. And he believes that by the end of 2024 is when they'll have it all figured out. The FBI, who had been investigating the D.B. Cooper case for years, stopped investigating and was said to have closed the case back in 2016. And only since Eric and Tom came out with this new information did the FBI have something to say about that. Actually, a retired FBI agent named Larry Carr had something to say. He said that the D.B. Cooper case remains open and it's possible that the FBI are retesting evidence, including the tie for DNA. Larry said that if he were still overseeing the case, he would conduct a thorough examination of all potential DNA containing items. Larry Carr also noted that even though it was administratively closed, it's still really considered open and a significant finding could prompt further investigation. He said that he doesn't care who solves the case, he just wants to know who the identity of D.B. Cooper is. The official FBI said no comment about it. Now, even though there were over 800 suspects in the years following the hijacking of Northwest Flight 305, no one was found to be a match and no arrests were ever made. And for the last 12 years or so, since late 2022, Eric 
has had his eye on Vince Peterson. Vince was a metallurgist who died in 2002 and bore a striking physical resemblance to eyewitness descriptions of D.B. Cooper. He would have been 52 years old at the time of the skyjacking. And eyewitnesses estimate that the skyjacker was to be in his mid-40s. And if you're wondering what the heck a metallurgist is, it's a scientist or engineer who specializes in the study and manipulation of metals and alloys. They work to understand the properties, behaviors, and processing techniques of metals to improve their performance, they develop new alloys, and create better manufacturing processes. Metallurgists can work in various industries, including mining, manufacturing, aerospace, automotive, and materials research. And in 1971, metallurgists were the backbone of the metalworking world. These were the experts who knew the ins and outs of metals from their composition to their behavior under different conditions. Whether they were designing new materials for space exploration or improving processes for mass producing steel, they were at the forefront of innovation. From the shiny chrome on your car to the sturdy steel in skyscrapers, they were behind it all, pushing the boundaries of what metals could do and shaping the world around us. Now let's talk about the tie. What's so interesting are the chemicals that were discovered on Cooper's tie. They were consistent with rare metals from the aerospace industry, and that's what led Eric to focus his investigation on Vince, who worked as an engineer in a specialty facility in Pittsburgh called Crucible Steel. And he worked there for more than 20 years. And during the 1960s and 70s, the facility served as a significant supplier of titanium and stainless steel components to Boeing. And Cooper's choice of a plan for hijacking was a Boeing 727 and has long hinted at his ties to the aerospace industry since he seemed to have knowledge of aviation terminology and apparent familiarity with aircraft mechanics during the heist. Eric traced crucible based based on titanium particles found on Cooper's tie, which the company held patents for at the time of the hijacking. And he speculates that Cooper may have been employed at Crucible, with Vince Peterson emerging as the most plausible candidate to date. And recently, he discovered a new particle on Cooper's tie, pure titanium mixed with stainless steel, further solidifying the ties to Crucible. And there's a process known as cold rolling, which is a process of smearing titanium with steel, and it was rare during the 60s and 70s, a practice in which Crucible specialized in, which makes it very interesting and compelling. As for the motive, Eric suggested a possible one, linking mass layoffs at both Crucible and Boeing in 1971 due to an aerospace downturn that year, and Cooper made a declaration to a stewardess aboard Flight 305 that the night of the skyjacking and said, I don't hold a grudge against your airline, miss. I just have a grudge, making it a very good potential motive and link. And I did a video not long ago on the story of D.B. Cooper with the details the night he skyjacked the plane. Check that out below or at the end. And this absolutely fascinates me. I'd be curious about a deeper look and dive into this Vince guy and his work and connecting some dots, aren't you? Now, there are some compelling pieces of info and the fact about the layoffs connected to Crucible Steel, connected to Vince, maybe it did prompt Vince, if it was him, to hijack an airplane on the night before Thanksgiving and have cash in hand to help through the tough times. Now, last year, Eric initiated legal action against the FBI to try and gain access to Cooper's tie to gain further information. However, a judge dismissed the case in December. So all he has to go on is the evidence I just mentioned from what they had in the past and using the new process. And despite undergoing DNA testing twice, that tie had minimal results, which prompted Eric to outline the outdated techniques that were used by investigators two decades ago compared to what modern technology is today. He did say, though, that he no longer requires the FBI's help in the case, but he is employing the help of Vince's daughter. But what he wants to do with the tie is to investigate a concealed spindle within the tie's knot, which he believes investigators overlooked. 
potentially containing a unique sample of Cooper's DNA. He stressed that the spindle in the knot could be more concentrated with DNA, meaning it may hold only one or two DNA profiles compared to the potential of so many elsewhere on that tie because of those who came in direct contact with it. The DNA they do extract will then be used by forensic genealogy to construct a family tree for Cooper, tracing his lineage backwards. Now note, this method is used more and more these days to catch the bad guys in various cases, some decades old, and it does take some time, especially if that DNA that matches are those of more distant relatives. However, if it's Vince Peterson, the investigator would have a big bonus, and that's that he's in contact with Vince's daughter, who is willing to cooperate even though she doesn't believe her dad is D.B. Cooper. More on that in a minute. But this method of DNA analysis plays a really crucial role with the isolation of individual DNA profiles from the tie, even being able to identify traces from pets such as dogs. Now, let's talk about Vince's daughter for a moment. Eric enlisted his daughter, Julie Dunbar's help to appeal to the FBI for access to the tie. Julie disagrees with Eric's theory of her dad being D.B. Cooper, but does agree to help obtain that tie and hopes that access to it will clear her father's name. And Julie emphasized that the actions of D.B. Cooper are out of character for her dad, but she does acknowledge that Eric presents a very compelling story and theory, but she maintains her conviction that her dad was not D.B. Cooper. And according to Julie, her dad didn't have any experience flying a plane or jumping out of one. He did, however, serve in the Merchant Marines, she said, but otherwise he didn't have additional military experience. She said he was just a normal, everyday father. He enjoyed being with his family, going on trips with us, going fishing or playing golf. He was exactly what you would want him to be as a dad. Now, imagining how her father would react to insinuations that he was D.B. Cooper, Julie said he would be stunned. She continued saying he would be totally shocked. He'd be flabbergasted and to say the very least. He would say, well, that's stupid. He'd call D.B. Cooper stupid and ask what that person was thinking. Now, sometimes for people, desperate times call for desperate measures. And one really can never know when faced with these things. Now, Julie said she never heard of the name D.B. Cooper growing up and only became aware of the case four years ago when a documentary about the unsolved hijacking happened to come across the TV channel she was watching. She didn't give the case a second thought until recently when her son sent her a news article from a local Pittsburgh news station naming her father as an unofficial suspect in the case. And Julie said she was initially very shocked, upset, and slightly angry at the insinuations that Eric was making. She reached out to Eric over email and the pair arranged to speak on the phone. While Eric didn't convince her that Peterson could have been the skyjacker, she said that his investigation as a whole was interesting and she believes that her dad may have actually known the real culprit, though she said, he was almost certainly unaware that they'd pull off the heist. But she said anything is possible. And Julie would have only been seven years old at the time of the skyjacking of the century. And about the tie, Julie said, I spoke to Eric about this clip-on tie, and as far as I know, my dad didn't have one in his wardrobe. Maybe it was something that he kept at work and someone else could have borrowed it and not returned it. But as far as my dad being D.B. Cooper himself, definitely not. He would have returned home late on Thanksgiving if it was him and he was in charge of carving the turkey every year. My mom would have been furious if he wasn't home and my dad wouldn't have left on a holiday like that unless it was absolutely mandatory for work. Now, at seven years old, it may be hard to remember if he had that tie or not, because if it was him, remember, he would have left it on that plane and she wouldn't have seen it again. Let me know your thoughts below. Now, to help with DNA analysis, Vince's daughter provided a letter to Eric that was sealed and stamped by her dad in 1961. Hopefully, they can extract something from that and maybe match it up. And D.B. Cooper's identity and if he survived the jump has been the talk of the case for over 50 years. If Vince ends up being D.B., then we know the answer and then we'll wonder just how he did it 
and got away with it in plain sight. Now, Eric called the FBI ridiculous for not allowing him to analyze the tie and said it would be a matter of minutes to analyze it and prove his case either way. He said, if the FBI gives us access for just 10 minutes, we literally have the potential to pull DNA off that spindle area, bring it into a private lab, have it sequenced, and then bingo, there you go. Not only would we be able to compare that to Vince Peterson and prove one way or the other if he's Cooper, but at the very least, even if it doesn't match, we still have DNA to work with that we could reverse engineer starting with Crucible Steel and the people that worked in the lab there. Eric said that he thinks the FBI is scared of getting egg on their face if he solved it and they didn't. He said the only obstacle stopping us from solving the case is the FBI. The only explanation I can come up with is they don't want to end up with egg on their face and that's it. Now Vince's daughter agrees and she said she's baffled why the FBI is acting the way they are. She said, Eric isn't asking for much, and if they can't solve it, let someone else do it. I think maybe it's going to hurt their ego. I don't know. Notable, the FBI declined to comment about this case or the push for answers. On November 24th, 1971, moments after takeoff, D.B. Cooper discreetly passed a note to a flight attendant claiming, possession of a bomb tucked away in his briefcase. Cooper's demand for $200,000 in $20 bills and four parachutes was clear. Spare the lives of the 36 passengers and six crew members on board. Following a tense exchange upon landing in Seattle where cash and parachutes were swapped for the safety of passengers and some crew, Cooper's audacious plan unfolded. The Boeing 727 was refueled and resumed its course bound for Mexico City. However, as darkness fell over southwest Washington around 8 p.m., a signal lit up the cockpit indicating the rear exit door had been opened, and in a daring move, Cooper lowered the stairs of the plane and vanished into the stormy night sky, leaving behind a mystifying legacy. Despite sporadic clues over the years, such as a cache of $20 bills discovered along the Columbia River in 1980 bearing Cooper's serial numbers, his fate remains a true mystery. Nevertheless, investigator Eric Euless remains determined hoping that recent breakthroughs in his investigation may finally unravel the mystery of D.B. Cooper by the year's end. And that will be truly amazing. According to Eric, he said, by December 31st, 2024, this is going to be a new world as far as this case is concerned. We're either going to have figured out who this guy is, or we're going to have a solid DNA profile to work with that's going to be pointing us in the right direction. How exciting is that? You can watch my D.B. Cooper video I released not long ago and those who are familiar with the case and watched it said they learned something new in it with all the details, so maybe it's worth the watch. You can check it out right here and check out my other full stories right here and let me know below what you'd like to see next. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there.